All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. And somebody is about to get a little bit of an ear bashing because that should not be looking like that. Obviously, material has been coming out of the jaw box and coming over the side of the machine. That means it's been overloaded for starters, yeah? So anyway, forget about that for now. Who wants to see me go and do a collaboration with Dave down at D&J Projects, yeah? Now then, if you know we've got these little J45 here, Dave's got a massive crusher. I mean, probably one of the biggest crushers I've ever seen, yeah? If you've, uh, if you've never uh, watched D&J, go and watch it, because it's a pretty cool channel. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to take a leaf out of his book here and now and ask for likes, right? So if you do like what we're doing, hit that like button. And if we get to 3,000 likes, yeah, we will go down and do a job on his crusher or any other machine that he's got that needs a repair, yeah? Uh, the director, you're going to have to get yourself off in a minute. I'll go and check on the lads. And I'm going to do a lot more footage on the DJI because we need to get in front. Yeah, we're a little bit behind. We're, we're finding it hard, really, to keep up every week. Um, with the director in and editing. So I'm going to do a lot more filming with the DJI. So I hope you guys like it. If you don't like it, let us know in the comments. Let's go. I'm going to go now check on the shutters. We've got the shutters running through the workshop, the concrete shutters, and I'll carry on with the DJI. We've got one, two tacked together there. Another two here. And then them sheets on the floor there will be like tacked to the this side of the frame. So probably, probably better Cal finishing these four before you start the other two smaller ones. Do you know what I mean? But I'll leave it up to you though. Now then these shutters are for like um, building concrete walls if you will. So they're like bolt back to back and then uh, fill it with concrete and then move along, move along, building a concrete wall. That's what they're for. Now then this truck here had its back door ripped off this morning. Well, yesterday, last night, shall I say. And ripped that bracket clean off there. So they've had to straighten this side up. I'll just show you a picture of what it was like yesterday. So that's what happens when you put oversized material into the back of the truck, yeah? When really it should have barn doors on. So there are big big boulders in back of there. So the uh, the customer who put the boulders into the back will be getting the bill for this. As the material should have been processed down small enough so it'll tip out of an eight wheeler. Otherwise, order a tipper with barn doors on, yeah? Anyway, I've got to get up to glass and dock now with the top deck which I'll show you so that's the top deck that we've made for the 1400X Warrior also we've got 30mm mesh there for the top deck which will oh no sorry 30mm mesh for the bottom deck and underneath that we've got 55mm meshes which will go on this top deck here they'll go over that way like that we've also got the locking clamps there I don't know if you can see them in there or not we've got the locking clamps there to uh, lock the meshes in so i'll get this over to glass and dock now and we've got a boat coming in today or there might be a boat already in there might be a boat already in to uh, so this can be loaded straight onto the boat we'll see when we get to glass and What boat is this actually going on here? Uh, the Silver River that we've got in now, she birthed this morning, eight o'clock. And when is that going out? She'll be sailing 12 hours time now, so about half eight, something like that. Half eight. Um, always moves on half an hour on the day, the tide. So we're, uh, yeah, lifting the uh, frame on when we're going. So the frame will just go straight onto here? Yeah, what we do, we've, we're, we're loading the base cargo and yeah. then this will sit on top, so at the moment, at the moment we've got um, a lot of manhole covers in there, the, the rings and keep dry timber and timber 
Yeah, so this, yeah. the, this, uh, what's it for? Is it a, a cattle uh, it's for a, or a screen? It's for a screen, a oh, top deck on a 1400X yeah. warrior screen. Yeah, so. And then messages need to go as well that's on the table. Yeah, there. that'll all be on, Baz. No problem. Yeah. Yep. So, all good. is all that lot going on that's just pulled in yeah, there? Yeah, uh, he might not because there's a lot of cargo here already. So it's always, uh, always yeah. as he go. Yeah. So that green container behind this truck yep. is backing out now, that's going to Isleman as well. It is indeed today. Right, so some some bits could go in that container. Indeed, we'll get all the groupies, all the loose bits in that and mark them up. That container there is what we're talking about. Yep. Right, so I forgot to bring a strap. Have you got a strap? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, yes. sort you, I'll sort your strap out now. Right, cheers, mate. All right. So we'll just get a strap and this will probably go straight onto the boat. So I'm just in one of the warehouses at Glasson here now and I'm after some skids because skids are like very hard to come by yeah and I know these men usually have plenty so I can find oh there they are so what I'll do I'll just uh, snifle a few of these should we say two top rows <laughs> whilst nobody's about You know what I'm saying? So Adrian, you'll probably be watching this on Saturday or Sunday. Cheers. Nobody will ever know. All right, so I've just arrived in Liverpool, just dropped the trail off, and I've uh, just come to look at this Cat 950 loader. Yeah, we've got a problem with the uh, bucket on it I should say it's getting a little bit thin who's that boy up there you know who it is you remember him do you remember, do you remember him <laughs> <laughs> right so this is the bucket now then the floor's gone really thin on it so as you can see we've got a hole there so we're down to a couple of mil thickness uh, it could really do with the heel plates to be changed. How many hours are on it, Tom? 8,401. 8,401 hours. Right, so, not gonna put a lot of money into it, I'll be honest. So what, what we'll do, we'll just put a floor skin within the floor. So we'll get a starter plate here, just behind the bolts run it up, let it curl round, probably curl round about 300 mil up there, in fact I'll do a template in a minute and show you, and what we'll do, it's already had a, like a, a flat bar welded on this little edge here, in front of the bolts, we'll weld another flat bar on there, but we'll do it all out of hard ox 450 or 500, whatever I can get my hands on, and whilst we're doing it we'll, uh, turn the edge as you can see the edge hasn't been turned yet so I'll just get a template done now and then you will have noticed that there's a lot of DJI footage going on at the moment me with the camera and the director not being out on the road with me uh, that's because he's got a lot of other things going on in the background at the moment he's moving out etc so there might be uh, quite a bit more DJI so I hope you're enjoying it Right, so we've got the template there now. Right, so that's the exact width of the plate plus the length of the bucket, yeah? So if we look at this here, that's going to be with shape. Come closer, cut the we can. So that's going to be with shape of the plate that's going in the floor. And what we'll do, we'll also put some plug holes in it. In the plate. When we bring the plate to site, we'll sit it in the bucket. We'll sit it in the bucket. We'll put. We'll go off here with the jack and push it down to the floor because the floor's a little bit warped because it's that thin, right? So it's quite a straightforward job. Probably take about four or five hours on site, really. Um, so the main thing is now that I've got that template, I've got my length. We'll also take this off here, where it's had a, like an old flat bar welded on there. 
and we'll weld another 40 be 12 in front of them bolts just to give it that little bit of extra protection on front of the bucket but it's very tired so we're not going to put much money into it great back to the yard all right so i'm just calling it jj bullens on my way back from liverpool with this template now these guys are a hard ox dealer there's not many hard ox dealers in the uk yeah so um i think people should know that these guys will cut this template out for me and roll it for me alistair here right, you yeah so we'll draw that on our cad software to yeah. match your plate flat yeah, and yeah. then we'll we'll cut it out plasma it get it in the big rollers so yeah. that's your outside form that's there isn't it form, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah a bit of flat bar yeah. then 2820 long yeah yeah and then full width 120 we'll just yeah. step it in 120 yeah and it goes back about 120 to allow you got your recess there yeah. yeah 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 and that'll be ready for you friday friday morning friday friday morning yeah what day was wednesday yeah yeah right she'll have it ready for friday friday morning <laughs> on site yeah <laughs> I'll think to next week, but Friday morning. No, no, Friday, Friday morning, yeah, right, I definitely. Plan, I can plan that in then, Sam. Yeah, so, no problem. Right, yeah, definitely. So, Friday morning, that's two days. So, for you guys that didn't know, these are Hard Ox dealers, yeah? So, give them a shout for any inquiries when it comes to Hard Ox. Right, so I've just arrived back from Bullens. You will have just seen the time lapse on these uh, shutters being put together, yeah? This is where the lads are up to so far. They've got six of them tacked together, which is all of them that we're doing. So we've got four, the four bigger frames, and we've got two with the smaller frames. Now these smaller frames actually bolt to the top of the bigger frame, yeah? And then they actually bolt back to back. So, plate there, plate there, and they'll have like a tube in between where you put your threaded bar through and then you'll fill it with concrete. So it'll like make a big, big, ooh, like a make a big concrete wall, yeah? Um, so it is a bit of a pain really this because it's taking a lot of room up in the workshop and my normal work is getting go going behind because of this. And it, it, it is always a problem doing jobs like this for uh, other people. But it is one of the bosses, so it has to be done. You know what I'm saying? Um, oh, yeah, just for some people might not know that I do have a merch um, website, weldthefabber.uk. There's quite a lot of stuff on there now, actually. We, we, have, we have got the soft shell jackets on. We've got hoodies on. We've got hats on, beanies, T-shirts, all sorts of cups. Go and take a look at weldthefabber.uk. Morning, guys. Mid-chapter. Holy update, yeah? For those that don't know, I've been using Holy now for the last month. And they've actually just sent me through two new flavours. Fruity Frog and Peach Panther. So I'm going to try one of these in a minute. That's the director's favourite. Blueberry Bear. So I've been using it for the last month. I've not had a coffee. I've not bought a coffee. And I've not bought an energy drink since I've been taking this. Right? Now a lot of people have a drink at night. Don't they to help them sleep. I struggle with insomnia. And I have done for the last probably 20 years now. Right, and I've only just started getting four or five hours sleep a night now. Whether it's using holy or coming off coffee and energy drinks, I'm not sure. But this stuff is brilliant. I'm telling you now. So one of these tubs will cost you 40 pound, right? So that's 80p per serving. But I actually double up on my servings in the morning. I'll take two. All right. So should we just make one now? Actually, I'm just gonna try this one. All right. What's it? Fruity frog. So this is how they come, yeah? And then you'll get a little uh, scoop within the tub. Just mix it with a bit of water. It 
it's hard to say, honestly it's hard to tell you how good this stuff really is without you trying it, you know. So I'll just bang two scoops in. Oh, in fact I'll just give it a little bit more today. We've got a busy day today. Alright. Well that's all you do. Quick shake. Right, so let's just give this a little taste. Oh yeah, director. What a taste. So guys, yeah, like I said before, I'm not a drinker, I only ever drink on special occasions, right, so that's probably once every couple of months, if that, a couple of times a year. So yeah, go to Holy website, check it out, the link will be in the description, yeah. Well done have a five for your first five pound off on your first order, which I think you get tubs like that, don't you, right, too, yeah. And um, then just weld the fabric after that for 10% off. I'm telling you now, it'll change your life. Okay, so I'm just in our truck main yard and we've got a hire for the uh, S130 screener, which is this. And then we just had an issue with it uh, starting, so we've had to jump start it. What's happening, Luke? Uh, battery's not good on it, lad. Battery's, battery's gone. gone. Charging, but it's just one old charge, so. Was in the right bad spot? It's not great to get to, but you'd get it. See, you'd get it if this belt were out, but right. it is what it is. I'll just show, show you, you where it is. I'll just show you guys where it is. If a battery was ever to go on you, so it's only 12 volt, so it's not keeping it charging, not no, no, no. no. And the battery's situated there. So this is going out on higher tomorrow, so it's a good job we just came down the yard to just check it over really. Luke, you can go and get one of them, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Right. Must be a high power battery that. Heavy duty. Right. Anyway, that's going out on higher. Uh, we've got a J45 in the crushing shed that we're just going through now, so we'll just go and take a look at that whilst we're in this yard. So this is a McCluskey J45. Fairly new machine. So that's a straight that handrail up there. That pile of should not be happening. So I'm just going to go and check, see if the uh, jaw level sensor is actually working. If you look at that sensor there, it's facing the machine. So that's had a bang. I don't know who's been loading this, but I'll find out. Block solid, the feeder. The feeder's solid. The feeder's block solid, yeah. Right, listen, somebody switched the sensor off on the jaw level, yeah? Yeah. So, we'll have to straighten that out. again the pre-screen is actually blocked on this so we're going to, luckily we been in the yard we can pull it out onto the power wash and wash it out as you can see there all that material build up there it's because it's blocked within the pre-screen so we'll track it out onto the wash and wash it out 
Here we got an R105, a little scalper, screener. That I better check over as well. So the reason for the pre-screen blocking there, because the lever is in the right position for the material to uh, uh, go behind the jaw, so it doesn't need to go onto the side belt, is because the material will have been too wet that they've been putting through it, and whoever's been putting it through hasn't noticed. Get onto our wash bay over there. There's our pole. Now then, I absolutely hate doing this, yeah, because it's not down to me or my lads to uh, clean the crushes out like this. So, it causes problems, because my lads don't want to wash machines off, yeah, they're not here to wash machines off. But we'll get it done anyway. So whilst the crush is outside of the wash, we'll have a tidy up in the crushing shed. I've just come round to our plant yard to look at this little case 1150M dozer. Now then, I don't know if this was in one of the last chapters or not, but there's, the chains were really slack and the idler was all the way to the end of the track frame. Can you see that? where it was out to so what we've actually done we've dropped a link on the chain right on both sides the machine's only done about 3,000 hours but it is an old machine it's like about what year is it now this 2016 machine so I don't know, really know the history of this machine because it got swallowed up with uh, a company that Foxy bought and put into the group, yeah, so I don't know its history, so anyway, we've just dropped a link on it because the chains were that stretched and we're just going to see how long it lasts before they actually fail because the idlers, the idlers are alright, the rollers are alright and the sprockets are alright, it's just the chain's really worn um, so yeah, it's an exercise that I've never really done before because we usually just change a full set of chains if we're going to do that um, but it'll be interesting to see how long it lasts. Obviously, it's, you're looking at 10 grand for a track frame, aren't you? So, to nothing, dropping a link and getting a few more hours out of it. And here we got uh, a ZX 350 that's just about to go on higher. And that bucket there, I built that bucket probably 10 years ago. Right, and within that 10 year period, it, ha it had a new edge on it. So that edge there, that 50 mil, might be a 60 mil edge that now, I can't remember. As you can see there, that edge, that is a hard ox 500 edge. And it's got HB 500 sides on it here. And HB 500 arrow heads here. Hard ox floor in it. And had all hard ox wear parts underneath the bucket, within the flat bars. So yeah, probably 10 years old. It was a, an EBS bucket originally. I just used the hangers, put new sides, a new floor in it, etc. All new wear parts. So it just shows that uh, using good material, it does last because that goes. This machine goes out on uh, on hard jobs, should we say, quarries. Might actually be for sale this machine but it is going out on air. Machines are starting to go out now. Plenty of them gone out anyway, blue gongs. So it'd be nice to get some feedback on them. So I've just come to uh, Simon's yard, one of our pals, to look at his crushers. He's got a problem with a feeder on his crusher. Can't get it to feed. Fairly new machine. So I can't see what the problem would be with it being a fairly new machine. Well, that ain't feeding. For starters, it won't start. So I'll just get my chunk lead out. Another bench. We'll 
we've got a machine uh, over next to the batteries and get it running and then try and find out what the problem really is typical Simon job like this I'll show you in a minute give it a turn lad Oh, come on. Now that's Simon for those that don't know. <laughs> Oh, the feed is just not firing, yeah? I'll just have a little think about this, find out what's going on. Okay, so we got it running. There's your feed and water running there. So this is Tom who loves the machine, right Tom? Yeah, you. Yeah. Right, so if there's a problem with the feed here, yeah? yeah. all you need to do is follow your wires back, I'll show you now. So there's your switch up there for your feeder. Yeah. The wires run down. Follow them back. And all it was, was one of them wires off there. Alright, so, there's nothing hard about this, it's the easiest machine in the world to run, yeah? Yeah. So, any other problems, just give me a ring, yeah? Will do, yeah. Alright, bud. Nice five minute fix. So, is it true then, or what? Oh, well, let the viewers decide, eh? Let the viewers decide? Yeah. Well, this is a male, this is a, a male, a, a Galdi. This is a male horse. Oh, it's a male horse, yeah. It's not interested one bit, is it? Why are you showing it? Why oh. are you showing it some, a few quid? Yeah, not interested, is it? Right. Well, put a fee now. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so you're taking me to a female horse with some cash? Well, I've just shown you the reaction of a male, haven't I? The reaction of a male horse to cash, yeah? Well, Listen, I don't know now about horses, no, yeah? Not, right. Not. <laughs> we'll go back to the mail. Right, we'll go back to the mail, yeah. Probably we'll offer it a few more quid now. Yeah, we'll go then, offer it a few more quid. This is not interesting. <laughs> you see, yeah, you know, now. <laughs> It's just not interested, is it? <laughs> and then back to female. I told you you were a character, didn't I? Back I told you you were a character. Back to female. Back to female. So, so. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm just back in the yard now. The 45 has been washed off. The pre-screen is now clear. And this is all the material that was blocked within the pre-screen chute. Now, as you can see, it's very wet material. Now obviously we want to try and recycle as much as possible, yeah? Uh, because we do send it all to the wash plant up at Jackson's. But now and again we do get blockages like this if the material is too wet. The other option is to send it all through the jaw. And the only way you can do that is to weld plates over the pre-screen and send all the material through the jaw. But then it will go into the screener outside 
and still have to go through uh, an 80mm punch plate and a 40mm deck. Obviously you don't want to send any material to the tip if it can be washed off. That's Paul just finishing it off now. The shed has been cleaned out, ready for it to go back in. And then you guys will have seen me doing this out on site uh, which takes about three hours three to four hours to take uh, well it took me four hours three four hours to take the feeder off last time didn't it well paul's just done it in an hour with a power wash so much faster if you've got a power wash to clean a pre-screen much faster So just looking at this crusher here now, just makes me feel so much better, yeah? I just wish people would take care in, the, in our equipment, yeah? Like I do, basically, do you know what I mean? Because it affects me. I don't know why it affects me, but it affects me like. So it's like, I like treat these machines like I treat my own van and my own car. Do you know what I mean? I just wish everybody would do, be, be more like that. The world would be a much better place. Do you know what I'm saying? Anyway, that's that done. Back to work. Okay, so I'm just back in the workshop. I'll just show you where we're up to with these concrete shutters. Now then, these are an absolute nightmare as we have to keep picking them up and putting them to one side to get trucks in and out. As you see, we drilled them holes right through. If you look down it now, it'll have a little bend in it like that, right? And the way to get that out is to like put heat spots on this side of the box section on this side of the box section say every other one of these a little bit of heat on the box i have to have two guns on it and it'll pull it back nice and straight well they are very time consuming these because we're uh, holding us up on other jobs should we say how many trucks have you had in today cal five or six trucks in yeah. so there you go five or six trucks in oh there's the mag drill bit uh, now then that's a, an m20 by 150 that bit there so we've got a 70 mil box a 60 mil box and a five milli plate so it makes it dead easy just to drill right through that plate with that uh, with that mag drill so we'll lie this down on the floor now and get it back up on the trestles and put some weld down these joints. An easy job but hard work when you've got trucks coming in and out that need repairs. This is why our workshop isn't big enough and we will be building a new workshop hopefully in the next year, hopefully. Okay, so now this one is finished welding. We're just gonna try and bend it back. Might be hard to tell with the camera. If you look down that, it's bent like that. 
So we need to put some heat on this top side, especially these box sections here, to try and pull it back. It will go worse at first, right? But then it'll come back straighter. Like a banana that at the minute. So we've got a trestle at each end. We could even put some weight in the middle if we wanted to, so, but it should just come back on its own. You just gotta know where to put the heat. We're doing it on every third one at the moment, do you see? We'll let it cool and then we'll do it again in between each one of them. A little bit time consuming. But we'll get it right. No, but it's good on this edge now. Okay, so the first shuttering frame is done. We'll put a little bit of heat treatment in it there to pull it back. Probably hard to see on cam, but it's bang on straight now, that. Might be hard to see there, but... As you can see, we've heat treated it. Bang, 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 bang. Put way down. Let it completely cool. Then brought it outside. get on with the next one they'll do a smaller one next so this will be a top one this will actually bolt to one of the bigger ones you can see there it'll bolt to one of the bigger ones so we'll just cut these sheets down for the plasma before they actually tack them on is that what you're doing Cal you're going to cut them are you cutting them down? Are you well tacking them on? Yeah. A J40 just come back in off fire. Let's go and take a look at that. I've got a feeling the pre screen will be blocked. And then uh, all these pre screens that keep blocking on the crushes is because we've had some seriously bad weather in the UK this last six months really so usually we weld plates on them on the uh, weld plates over the pre-screen in winter just to uh, stop this from happening next year we will do that again anyway I'll take a walk down the yard we'll take a look at this 40 is it blocked up Paul? yeah the board has got the east side clear and shake it now get it to drop what is it blocked in the pre screen? Yeah. 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 Solid, like concrete. Like concrete. So, this is one that we can actually build back to the customer for cleaning. Like on the 45, we couldn't because we did it ourselves. So we'll get that washed off and uh, give it a full inspection. It'll go out like brand new. As you can see, this material coming off here. That's what was blocked inside. The 
mag belt and he's trapped it over. Can you see how it's over to the left there? We'll track that back over. So I've just took Ollie, for, Ollie down from off the steps there whilst the machine is running. I don't want anyone still on the uh, on the steps when the machine are running, yeah? Especially when the jaw's running. But the best way to clean it is to uh, keep your belt running, keep the feeder running and uh, let it drop down onto the belt. <coughs> don't fire the jaw. So that's that J40 washed off, ready for inspection. An S130 that's just about to go out on higher. That has been fully inspected before it goes. And that's going for a job up in Preston somewhere. We've also got another 40 that's just come back in. has been working down in Colwyn Bay so we'll have to go right through this and uh, see if there's any issues all our crushes and screeners are fairly new within a couple of years anyway apart from the little QE141 that we've got a little Sambic screener that's our Alex just stretching his trailer So that is a good screen of that, S130, four-way split. When it is up and running, I'll, uh, I'll go to site and uh, just make sure it's set up correctly, should we say. I think it's actually going to Jackson's. So if it's going to Jackson's, I've no, no real issues because uh, Dave Scott will be running it, which is good to know. He's the most experienced guy that I do know when it comes to crushing and screening within the group. Look who's just landed. Boxes here. So that's the S130 loaded, ready to go. Let's just have a quick chat with Al before he goes. 14, 11, that'll do. 14, 11? Yeah, not bad that. Folds up tidy. I can even get it lower if I really wanted to. Yeah. So that's brilliant, that. Absolutely good. How's the new unit? Love it. <laughs> really Love good, it. yeah, it's spot on. Really, really good. How much better than the old girl? Well, I don't need cruel to the old wagon, I loved it. Yeah. But, uh, it's, it's a 21st century wagon, yeah. you know. Yeah. The other one wasn't, it was a 20th century wagon. What's power like? It's unstoppable. What you pulled with? Uh, I've had a big 40 ton digger, took it back from Lincoln yesterday. Yeah, yeah didn't know stopping, I had so many M62. It yeah. was no problem at all, really easy. Proper thing. Okay, so we've just got an eight wheeler come back in here for an exhaust. I probably don't need to tell you what truck it is, do I? Oh, it's a Volvo exhaust. So we just took the stack off that runs up here. And then what I'm starting to think is, yeah, it could be water coming into the stack, coming down and settling at this point here. And that's where they're all failing. If you think about it, when the truck is sat stationary, you get it got rain coming in into the stack, it drops down, and it'll come along here and then just rest at that point there in the centre. 
I don't know, but it's just a thought. And uh, got a hole in the body floor. Like a big boulder's dropped there. Even, in fact, it probably looks like a tooth off a bucket, that, doesn't it? And we've also got a barn door that's split apart. Be a two-pop of bucket, I'm not sure. We'll never know. So we've got the smaller frame out. I'll just do some with the second one of the uh, smaller ones. And Luke's, do Luke's doing the exhaust on the Volvo. I just want to address something that um, was in the comments last week of these shutters, these steel shutters. If you, you might not be able to see on camera there, but they've bored that way, yeah? Now people were mentioning, why have we not got a third trestle within the center? Well, if you're steel fabricators, you should know why we've not got a trestle in the center, yeah? For one, it's gonna bore that way anyway. It's going to bore like that because we've nothing, or should I say, all the weld is going on the bottom side of the box sections at this moment in time. Yeah, so there'll be weld there, weld there, weld there. So that is naturally going to make that bore that way. So let's just look at this for the viewers that don't know. Say that's where box section. There. Right, and for that box section, if you're going to put heat on this side, which we are doing because we've got uh, other box sections going that way, haven't we? And we've got a steel plate on the bottom. So that box end has to be welded to that steel plate. So you're going to put heat, 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 all the way along that bottom edge. Although you are, although we've got another box section up here, like that. But once again, you put heat on the bottom side of that box section. Heat, 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 right? So the only way to pull that back is to apply heat here at the top of this one. Heat, 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 and heat spots like I've shown you earlier. And also on these box sections and them ones going across. So for example, we're going to have to put heat here, 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 and so on, all the way down until it comes back completely straight. So that's why we haven't got a trestle under the centre because if we did have a trestle under the centre it would already have picked up off the trestle. Just thought I'd point that out to you guys. The meshes have landed for this little 105. We've we'll just got Callum and Jay putting these in. We've had to pull them off them uh, shutter frames. We've got two 14, 14 mil meshes, I think they are going in. Trying to pull some 10 mil out. Well, there's only a two way split this. So it's had its third conveyor taken off. 
these 105 usually have three conveyor system on them and at this side it's had the conveyor taken off it should be there and it's all been altered just to be a just to be a two-way split so the, the boys outside in the yard are actually waiting for this so it's quite a rush job uh, getting these meshes in the back just landed five minutes ago both off Ag Pro and we've got a J40 going out on higher and the rain started to come again unbelievable this British weather at the moment so we've got a 40 and a 45 sat there and we've got a 40 going out and it's Alex that's taking it out again this is going over to our Liverpool yard which is the old tarmac yard in Liverpool, old swan. So that'll be going to the yard where we've got the 950 cat loader that needs to skin in the floor. So I'm expecting that any time off Bullens to be dropped off in the yard. Once that is dropped off, we'll, uh, we'll get it to site on a trailer. Probably take that myself on the van and fit it myself. Uh, we have got a bit of news. One of the lads is leaving. Our Luke. He's, uh, he's decided to move on to uh, new things so we'll get him on camera later and wish him all the best because he is a good lad uh, got nothing but respect for him he does a good job for us and uh, yeah I will never hold anybody back if they want to move on and uh, try something but he is actually going back into the ag game which he loves so I think he's kind of missing it uh, driving them forager things and grass season Grass fever they say, don't they? So hopefully the weather will be coming back soon, but the the, pe the company that he works for uh, do do a lot of welding. What's the company called, Cal? Where Luke's going back to? What's it called, where Luke's going back to? Wall Banks? Yeah, so he's going back to Wall Banks. So, so yeah, I wish him all the best. And uh, we might even go and see him at Wall Banks in one of them forager things, like we said, we'll... Uh, We'll do an episode with him, but that might not happen now, but you never know. But he is out on site at minute doing a job on an A30 dump truck, putting some greedy boards on it. So we will go and see him shortly and uh, get him on camera and uh, let him have his, uh, his last talk on camera, should we say. So as I'm pulling back up the yard, there's a mixer here. Mixer drum that's leaking for Jackson's. Oh, and it's at the back end somewhere, so let's have a see a bit of mastic on it. Oh, there we go. Yeah, they've already marked it up, look, you see. So I'd say that drum has gone really thin, so we'll probably patch it from, say, here all the way up across and back down here but as soon as you start touching that with welder it blows through well, it's getting ready for a new drum a new barrel whatever you call them so yeah they're pushing for this so we'll get that in it next uh, day or so but like once again with the shutter frames being in the workshop it makes it hard work So the director's here. This has just been straightened as the lads are in the uh, pushing shed, just changing their meshes. That's perfectly straight now, that. I don't know if you can tell, director, but if you look down that box section there, it's within the tolerance that I want anyway. Uh, so those people that uh, did mention it needed a trestle in the middle, no, it didn't. Anyway, the, uh, the lads have just found the burst pipe on that 105 as well, so we've got Pertec here just fitting the pipe to it. So we will go up to Jackson's now and look at this A30. There's a few other jobs that I need to look at up there, but uh, mainly uh, just to get Luke in this chapter to finish off, really, because I think we're getting up to the end and I'd like to get him on uh, before we finish this chapter. 
All right, so whilst we're on the road, I just want to uh, address shout outs. All right, we don't like giving shout outs because we get too many DMs and we get too many emails. But we got a nice letter of uh, a lady called Sarah back uh, in December. I think Marcus is just passing us there. Um, we got a, a nice letter off a lady called Sarah back after in Christmas time, just after Christmas, about two young lads that want to be welders, well, possibly want to be welders, and they watch the subscribers and they watch the channel every week. So it was a really nice email. I did a little, um, recorded a little clip back then. It was the birthday last week, so our director played the shout out. All right, so I just popped in to uh, actually get a bit of merch for myself that I need. And uh, whilst I'm here, I just want to uh, say a happy birthday to Oliver and James. All right, so it was uh, actually Sarah that got in touch with the director and sent us a really uh, nice email. So the some subs of ours that uh, watch our videos every week. So I'll just do uh, a little WF on them, eat chat for you, so they know that it, it's come from me. That's for Oliver. All right. And that's for James. So happy birthday lads. Hope you have a good day. And keep watching. Cheers. So here we are with the man himself. <laughs> Leaving us. Huh? So Luke's been with us six months now. You'll have seen him on him a lot of the chapters, won't you? Yeah, and he's decided to go back to Wall Banks, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wallbank. So that's where he came from before he came to us, yeah. So I have no problem with that whatsoever, yeah. And I can all I can say about him is he's a diamond really. Yeah, so if anybody wants to employ him in future, he's a good lad, he's a good all rounder, he puts the hours in and he's never scared of anything, yeah. And he's always welcome to come back to work for us if he ever wants to. Yeah, so that's the main thing. Is here at the moment, just on this 30, A30G. We're going to put some uh, greedy boards on it with Paul up there. So today, I know we're getting towards the end of the chapter here now. We're pretty much at the end of the chapter, but this is Monday today. He's got four days left to do with us, so he'll do some big hours for us, yeah. I'm going to give you the van over the weekend, yeah, yeah to empty the van to, to wherever he's going to, you know what I mean? And. Uh, as long as it comes back to us yeah, nice and tidy. And, and clean. Uh, that's how I like to leave things with people that leave us, yeah. So always leave on a good note. You know, there's no there's no bad blood or anything like that between us. So Luke, have you got out to say, lad? No, oh, really, just you know, thank, thanks for the opportunity, really. Yeah. You know, thanks for having me. I know it's been a bit short and sweet, but it's yeah, been it's, a good six it, months. It, it's, it's been a good six months. Is, isn't it? And we yeah. mentioned about doing the uh, Forager, going out of the Forager with Luke, yeah? But that probably will still happen if yeah. Wallbanks are up for it. That's up to Wallbanks if they want to let us do that, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So if they want us to go out on road with you and do it, film an episode or whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. then that's up to them then. So I have no hard feelings towards them for him going back to them, you know what I mean? So definitely, definitely. it is what it is, do you know? That's I have, uh, I did put a shout out on Instagram last week that I'm looking for somebody else. I've got 10 CVs in, I've got 10 lads to look at. But we're on a different platform here now with, uh, YouTube, so if there's anybody on YouTube that's interested in the position working with us, there's a van here waiting for you. Yeah, drop us a, uh, a message, an email or a comment, whatever, yeah? And uh, I'll look at them all. Right, Luke, my boy. That's probably gonna be the last time probably. I'm on, on a chronicle. Probably. probably. All right. Yeah. You're welcome to come back anytime, lad. Sure. All right. Great. Right, so I think we'll end this chapter here and now. Bit of a sad ending for me, really. Oh, he's got a little, yeah, he's got a little yeah. grill in his face. Look, he can't wait to get back at Forager. <laughs> but I've still got my, uh, my old boy up there. Where is he? Yeah. Oh, there he is. It there is. he is. It is. He's Paul's been with... you could count that for. <laughs> <laughs> Paul's been with me at workshop eight years, although he's worked at Hurt Plant longer than me. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and share, like I always say. Check out my other episodes. And I'll catch you on the next one.